So the NASA Airborne Snow Observatory is an aircraft that flies high above mountain basins. And out the bottom of the plane, there's a hole, and out through that hole looks two instruments. One is called a scanning LIDAR, which is a dual laser system that sprays out hundreds of thousands of pulses of light per second to measure the topography of the snow surface. And we also fly those mountain basins when there's no snow on the ground to get that topography. The difference between the two gives us the snow depth distribution. It's a way to understand the snowpack like we've never known on planet Earth before. The other instrument is called an imaging spectrometer and it measures the reflected sunlight coming off of the snow surface. That tells us how much sunlight is being absorbed by the snow. And because absorbed sunlight represents about 90 to 95 percent of the energy that goes to melting snow, that is a critical measurement to understand the timing and the magnitude of snowmelt runoff. The way that we have been measuring snowpack in the western U.S. and uh, here in the Sierra Nevada where it actually started, that program uses the snow tubes that get plunged into the snowpack, they're pulled up and weighed, and that tells you how much water there is tied up in that snowpack. But because there's so few measurements and it's so hard to make those measurements in the high mountains, we realized that taking the technology that was developed to explore the universe, to explore our solar system, and to explore planet Earth, we could do a much, much better job and a comprehensive job of mapping all of the snowpack, touching with the lasers every patch of snow across the mountain landscape. In terms of forecast, the errors in snowmelt runoff forecasting used to be somewhere between 20 and 40%. Now that's down to less than 2% with the Airborne Snow Observatory. Making these maps of snow water equivalent, we can provide those to the water managers, say in the, the Hetch Hetchy Water and Power for the city of San Francisco. We can do the seasonal forecasts for how much water is going to be coming out of the mountain basins across the entire snowmelt period but we can also do forecasts for how much is going to be coming tomorrow or across the next week. And that's critical for that very important management of reservoirs, hydroelectric generation, capturing of water, releasing of water, flood mitigation. It really is central to this most important resource in the Western US. This year's snowpack is, uh, has been fantastic. 2017, uh, we started out with the snowpocalypse of January, in which our best understanding across the Sierra Nevada is that during those atmospheric rivers that came in across about three weeks, we got about 25% more than the total flow of the Colorado River across an entire year. It's a huge year. The sum of April 1 snowpacks from 2013, 14, 15, and 16, the sum of that is only 92% of April 1 of this year. Right? This year is bigger than the total of those four years combined. Right? That's a huge number. There are many places in our mountains around here that are not going to melt out this year. There will be snow across the landscape. In other words, it's kind of glacier building time. And unfortunately, with the changing climate, we're not gonna see too many years of that. But it is exciting to see what a glacier building year looks like. So, has this ended, all this new snowfall this year, and this, this near record snowfall ended the drought? Well, it depends on which drought you're talking about. We have water that's on the surface, which is what we're looking at out here, and that flows into reservoirs. But there's also the water that's beneath the ground, the groundwater and the aquifers. So the surface water component of the drought, that's pretty much over. We're gonna be able to fill the reservoirs many times over 
But the groundwater takes a long time to replenish. And over the previous four years of intense drought, groundwater was pumped to try to compensate for the lack of surface water. To get out of that drought, we need to replenish that aquifer to get that water supply back to its original state. And that's gonna be a grand challenge. So we should definitely not use this year to just forget everything that we've learned. This year is one year. It's a big year, and it's one we're gonna talk about for a long time. Uh, but that is why it's critical that we have the kind of science and technology development that we do around this most critical uh, resource in the Western U.S.